David Farrell is just off the red eye from Los Angeles. I hope it doesn't impede his abilities, but he is the world record holder, Guinness record holder for memory. He has memorized an astonishing 59 decks of cards, 3,068 cards in sequence, and he says it's not an innate talent. He wasn't born with this. David, come out and tell us how we can all do that trick. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's an honor. Uh, so yes, Moses is right, I, uh, I just did a red eye from LA, so uh, this is a new experience for me, and that's, uh, that's wonderful. Um, what I want to show you today is, uh, oh, I want to start off actually with a little memory technique. Who here by a show of hands has ever heard of the concept of memory techniques? Have you ever heard that phrase? Okay, so we actually have about half the audience, um, and that's actually a tremendous improvement. When I first started learning memory techniques, uh, you might have found maybe one or two percent of people actually knew what a memory technique was. There are techniques, sometimes they're called brain hacks, that allow us to kind of trick our brain into memorizing things, and I actually have one right behind me. It's my company logo. My last name happens to be Pharaoh. I, I want you to know I'm not Egyptian, right? <laughs> But just like the Geico Gecko and the Aflac Duck and other different corporate logos, I've had a tremendous success by doing a little play on words with my last name. And I just find it so ironic that Moses even invited me to the <laughs> show. It took a little while to sink in, right? Yeah. All right. All right. So let's take a little trip down memory lane. I'm going to show you some things that uh, hopefully will make you think differently about your memory. And this is the math morning, so we're actually going to talk about memorizing numbers, including Pi. There's some great world records about memorizing pi. Um, so going down memory lane, number the first thing I want to teach you is a simple trick to improve your memory. I want everyone to take a second and look up. Oh, when I look up, I see the lights. But look up for just a second. Have you ever done that naturally when somebody asks you a question? Right? Everyone's nodding their head. Excellent. So, so uh, let's say, for example, somebody asks you for directions and you don't have you know, GPS or you know, somebody asks you what, something, what your car looks like, something like that. You stop for a second and go, hmm, and you look up for a second. I want you to think about that because that is your natural reaction for memory. But unfortunately, a lot of systems, including, including uh, uh, the education system as well, really trains us out of that, right? What's the first thing a teacher says in the middle of an exam? Look down at your page. Now, they said that in a very loud voice to me because I was actually diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia when I was a kid. So I was the class clown. I was the one, you know, thought least likely to succeed academically and, and intellectually. Um, but really, I just had to learn a different way. And I went on a quest to discover everything I could about memory. And I'm going to share with you some of those things. But I want you to keep remembering that concept of looking up. All right, so we're going to do a memory exercise here. I want everybody in this room to memorize this list perfectly. Oh, all of a sudden, I'm getting people more nervous than the math guy did. <laughs> um, so let me give you a few hints on how to do this. First of all, your brain does not like abstract objects. What I mean by abstract objects are things that don't have a weight, a depth, a color, a feel. If I were to walk up here and say, my name is Chair, even though it's a weird name, you'd be much more likely to remember it than the word Dave, right? Because it's a physical thing, it has weight, it has depth, it's an object. Your brain latches on to that, just like the, the, the corporate symbol. What was my last name again? Ah, it's working already. Okay, so if we're going to memorize this list, we've got to turn it into something that we can visualize. So we have, a, we have a cat, a watermelon, a lake, a bunny rabbit. This was actually randomly created by a computer. It was done in a, in a memory lab. We did a double-blind neuroscience study on my system in uh, McGill University. So this is one of, the, one of the lists that we used. But if I turn this into something that's easier to remember, you want to play a little game with me? And maybe improve your memory along the way? All right, so if I want you to memorize this list, here's how I'm going to go about it. I'm going to take each one of these words, I'm going to turn them into images and make it interesting. It's got to be wild. It's got to wake up your brain, right? Especially first thing in the morning. So we have a cat, a watermelon, and a lake. That's kind of boring. But if I saw a cat pushing a watermelon out of a lake, how long do you think you'd remember that for? 
I've had people remember this image for years. <laughs> but let's keep on going, okay? So as we ended off with lake, now the way memory techniques work is we want to connect things together. Just like you connected my name to my face when I had the pharaoh symbol, you want to connect things together. So we already connected cat and watermelon and lake, the first three things. So now we have lake kind of dangling there. We want to connect something to it. And the next one is a bunny rabbit. So no, I did not throw a bunny rabbit into a lake for your amusement. Any PETA people, you can sit down. We actually uh, found this little, uh, little guy. Isn't that cute? He dresses up every Easter and I guess scares the fish um, by uh, looking like an Easter bunny. So now we have cat, watermelon, lake, and bunny rabbit. After that is ketchup. And I have a neat image for that. This is a, an internet thing called a dunny and it's covered in ketchup. No? No, not good enough? All right, you can use your imagination if it doesn't work for you. The next one after ketchup is water tower. Now, do you think I was able to find a picture of a water tower in the shape of a ketchup bottle? Do you think that's possible? Check this out. This is a real water tower uh, in, uh, in the shape of a ketchup bottle. I think that's really, really fascinating. Okay, so after, after water tower, we have a teapot. And you think I found a, t a water tower in the shape of a teapot? You should know by now that I already have. So this is a water, power, water tower teapot, uh, and um, I had to search quite a, quite a ways for that. So where are we at right now? What, what's, what's in the list? We start off with what? Cat, watermelon, lake, bunny rabbit, ketchup, water tower, teapot. Five, six, seven. So that's seven. That is the limit, right? That's the human limit of memory. We know that, right? We can't go any further. Does your brain hurt yet? No, I keep on going? Okay. All right, so after teapot is UFO. This is just the list I was given. So I actually found a UFO teapot. <laughs> Isn't this cool? I love it, right? And then um, after UFO was a boat. I had a little difficulty with this image. I would picture maybe a UFO abducting a boat, but we had, we had uh, someone make a, a boat UFO thing. But uh, that'll stick in my mind. I like that. All right, so now we have a boat, and we want to connect the next thing to it, which was a tree. So I would picture a tree growing inside a boat or something like that. But I actually found this amazing image of a tree that kind of looks like an old ship. Isn't that amazing? All right. All right. So now after, after tree, we have an ice storm. So check out this. We have a tree covered in ice. You can also picture all sorts of you know, beautiful imagery of ice storm. So, so where are we at now? Well, I'm going to go till the end before we do a big reveal here. Um, now, after ice storm, we also have a computer. So I found a computer covered in ice. This is actually, I believe, in Montreal when they, once a year they do this big festival where they make an ice hotel, and this was an ice computer. Isn't that awesome? All right. Um, now, after computer, we have a computerized shoe. Now, I know there's a lot of crazy fashions out there, but would any women in this audience be willing to wear these? No? A couple of people. Maybe if you got like the, the cushions in there, you know? I'm kind of pointy. Um, <laughs> all right. And after shoe, we have a car. Um, and after car, we have a phone. Well, that's kind of boring, a car phone. Kind of shows, shows my age, I remember car phones. Um, but this is my favorite one for car phone. Well, the funny thing is I do this talk at colleges, I show them this image, and they go up to me and go, that's not a phone, that's not, where's, the, where's the touch screen? <laughs> and they're just like, you will never know the amazing relationship between a pencil and a cassette tape. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're almost, we're almost near the end here. We have phone, to, no, nobody's head hurts, right? We're still having fun? Okay. After phone is dog. So I would picture something crazy like a dog tearing apart a phone. You tell me if this, if this image is, 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 is okay, it's friendly here. Dog and phone. All right. And the last one is dog and alligator. Of course, all the, all the guys in the audience are like, yeah, fight, dog and alligator, right? Well, the neat thing about memory techniques is you can use your imagination. You can be as crazy as you want. So you don't have to be restricted by what I show. But I wanted to show something cutesy. So I have a dog and an alligator costume. Actually, I wanted, I wanted, this is one of my favorite ones. Check this out. <laughs> like, at first, at first you think something's going on, and then you realize it's a costume, right? <laughs> All right. So how well did we do? Now, at, at any point, did you feel like you just you were stressed out, you're trying to cram, you're really, really working hard at it? So when your memory works, it works naturally. Just like when you look up, you don't, you don't tell yourself, gee, I better look up to access the visual portions of my brain. No, you just look up. 
The reason why you have to look up, by the way, is because behind your eyeballs is a large bundle of nerves called the optic nerve. And by literally looking up, you actually direct more energy to different parts of the brain, mostly the visual centers, at least this is the way it's believed uh, is the explanation by scientists. But what we, don't, what we do know is that when you look down, you're more forgetful. How many times have you, have you been depressed, have you been you know, emotional, whatever, and you're looking down to try to calm yourself down, and all of a sudden you're forgetting things. And then you hate yourself. You're like, oh my God, I'm getting old, I'm, old. I'm getting forgetful, everything. Stop for a second, breathe, and look up. Let's try this little exercise here. What's the first item in the list? Cat, Cat and? Water. And? Cake. And then? Water. Bunny rabbit, and then? Ketchup, and then? Water, Water tower. Teapot, yeah. UFO was after the UFO. That's right. And the boat and the tree and the, uh, the ice storm, then the computer. Sh yes, the shoe, then the car, car to the phone, phone to the, and the dog to the. Give yourselves a hand. That was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, I'll tell you, actually, according to uh, several IQ tests, the limit of ordinary memory is seven, a genius level is nine. We actually just did 17. But could we keep going, theoretically? Could we keep on adding more and adding more? Of course we could. You know what? It's the same mechanism that you use when you watch a movie that you like. You can keep on adding scenes as long as it's interesting. I mean, like, how long did, like, Tolkien's movies go on? Like, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. But, the, the point is we can keep on adding this interesting content and our brain loves it as long as it's in a form that we really enjoy. All right, so what I want to do is um, talk to you a bit about how to memorize numbers and about a project that we're doing uh, for students. So right now you know how to memorize lists of objects, but in order to memorize things that are not ordinary lists of things you can visualize, we have to use a code, and this is a number code. So um, on the left is a color code uh, that's uh, something I came up with, and the phonetic code is something that's a little bit older that people use for memory techniques for a long time. Essentially what we do when we, mem when we memorize numbers is we turn these numbers into, say, sounds, and then turn those into words, and then all of a sudden, we can remember whole sentences and memorize all the numbers that we want. And there's some uh, records of people memorizing you know, 50,000 digits of pi and things like that. So I want to show that for just a second. Um, and uh, I want to tell you that uh, I've had a lot of success with this, but, but this is real milestone here being at Idea City. I've been on television a lot for, for memory pro programs. Um, this led to me starting my own PR firm, but I really hadn't... I really hadn't gotten it out there because we haven't reached students. I've been going to colleges and universities, I've been going uh, uh, to talks like this, and I was still encountering people who were in high school, and junior high and, and elementary school, and they just, they just wanted to learn these memory techniques. So what we did is we created uh, what are called memory tournaments. And I can't take all the credit for this. I have my, my lovely wife who uh, is sitting right here. There you go, wave to everybody, say hi. <laughs> uh, her and I founded this also with the help, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, Rick Green, you know if you've heard of him before? He's one of the fantastics, Commander Rick from, from TV, he's a Canadian legend, and also Sergio Gonzalez, he's a head of innovation over at eBay. Um, we wrote this book called the World Memory Tournament Manual, and essentially what it does is it uh, gets people to learn these memory techniques and then compete against each other for prizes. And uh, we actually have a few examples here, um, but uh, recently this year, and the reason why I'm here is because we created the first Canadian memory tournament. And I actually have one of the winners with me here. Alexi, come on up. All right. So we call the Canadian Memory Tournament uh, Canada's Best Memory because I think that just kind of fits with a lot of Canadiana. Um, right here, I, I did get the best overall, but I'm a world record holder. But one of the neat things that we found is that the best for numbers and the best for cards actually went to Alexi here and his son, Dennis, who couldn't be with us because... He's, I guess, school, huh? Exactly. Yeah, yeah school. So <laughs> what we're going to do here is show you how easy it is for an ordinary person to learn this. Um, do you want to maybe sit a little closer to me and just sure. tell, uh, can we get a micro microphone for him? You run out of hand mic here? Awesome. 
All right. So um, just say how you learned the techniques. You just learned it in that day and... and uh, uh, yeah, essentially, uh, we, out of curiosity, went to Science Center. I heard it on, I believe, actually, on 96.3, yeah. or maybe just FM, I don't remember. On the radio, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just decided to go and check it out. Sound uh, exciting. And then they uh, gave pretty much a similar presentation. A little bit longer, I would say, yeah, and then uh, organize the tournament. So, uh, looking at the prompts which were on the screen, just you've seen them. My son and myself and uh, the rest of the gang, we participated in the competition that they gave to us, and that's pretty much uh, what it was. So, no training, nothing. <laughs> well, now I, he did, has been doing some training since then. For today's uh, event, I got him to try to memorize a bunch of digits of pi. So we actually have um, an example here. If you can face away from the screen, so we can't, so you can't be considered cheating here. I'm going to move oh, over yeah. here. So, so we're going to test you here. No, you can test me here. All right. Absolutely, so, yeah. so this is, is an ordinary person who just had a few lessons in this. And um, what I want you to do is to remember as many digits of pi as you can. I have it behind you on the screen, oh, good. Yeah. You, using exactly the system that you just learned, the list, making the images, and using the code. OK. No so, pressure. Uh, no, no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Starts with three. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's 314159, that's what I remember. And then 2, 6, 5, 3, 5, Nine. Oh no, that's two. Yeah, five, eight, nine. Eight, nine. Eight, uh, seven, nine. That's right. Uh, eight, four, six, two, six, four, three, three, eight, three. Uh, two, seven, nine, five, yeah. zero, mm -hmm. uh, two, eight, eight, four, one, um, Eight. Oh, yes. Uh, just a sec. Uh, but I have four one nine is the next. Oh, nine, nine, nine. It's true. Nine. <laughs> so this uh, is this is real, the, guys. The, I the gave him this is, challenge. Uh, uh, yeah. I gave him this challenge just yesterday nine, to see how much he could do. Uh, uh, four one. One. Nine, one. No, no. Just nine. a sec. F four one. Yeah. Uh, do another Seven, there you go. One, six, five, three, nine, nine. Uh, just a sec. All right. Oh, uh, so yeah. There's some more. <laughs> you, you missed a goal, but I think it's pretty good, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Now. That was all very impromptu, and I want to give him another hand for, uh, for putting out the effort for that. <laughs> now, we uh, kind of organized this last minute, and I wanted him to give it a try. And I, I, that's really what my tournaments were all about, which really to, to give memory techniques to everyone, to make it possible for brand new people, novices, to just start out in this. So if you want to support uh, memory tournaments, you can contact us at Faro PR um, or at uh, Canada's Best Memory. Um, we do have some uh, programs available um, in the store. I'm offering a special for Idea, uh, the, the Idea Village here. Um, uh, the Idea City. I, um, normally, these programs are about $200 US on our website, but uh, we're just offering it for 100 bucks Canadian and $15 for the, uh, the memory tournament manual. So uh, I uh, hope to see you all at the, uh, the next uh, Canadian memory tournament. Thank you very much. <laughs>
if you had to choose, for example, would you rather lose your physical capacity or your mental capacity? And uh, we know that uh, when you lose your memory, you lose yourself. You lose your mind, you lose yourself. So I'm wondering, these techniques of yours, can they be helpful in the campaign that we all have to wage against dementia and Alzheimer's? Well, absolutely. In fact, there's never been more evidence uh, of it than, uh, than today. Um, with, uh, now, I will, I will say, if you want to judge what the right kind of brain training is, um, I would, uh, as an expert, I gotta say, stay away from just the repetitive games. Uh, you will get better at anything that you do repetitively, but you will only improve your memory by actually memorizing stuff. So, so what Alexi did was a great example, took on a challenge uh, to memorize, say, 50 digits of pi, recalls it under a stressful situation. Tremendous expansion of your memory capacity. If you do crosswords, you'll get better at crosswords. You won't get better at memory. My recommendation is, um, you know, choose the language you've always wanted to learn or a musical instrument you always wanted to learn and uh, just learn a little bit each day and it tunes your memory and sharpens it. And we know, uh, based on all the studies out there, I mean, the, the most conservative studies say that it cuts your risk for uh, Alzheimer's and dementia by, by half. Some of the more extreme ones, like 95%. Uh, it's absolutely astounding what a little bit of brain training will do for you. So use it use or, it or lose, lose it. it. All right, a lesson for all of us. We have an abiding interest in longevity and radical life extension. There's no point in getting all of those extra years if you can't bring your mind along and, with you. And I think we have a responsibility too, you know? As we get older, we keep all that wisdom and it's up to us to, to stay sharp and stay strong so, so we, can, uh, we can participate and, and you know, be respected and everything, That's be great. an icon like you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.